truth alone that you stand on. Because without the spirit of the living God infused in your life, it is nothing. In fact, Paul said this. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. He also said the kingdom of God is not of words. And that threw everything out my, out my window. It was like, oh my goodness, I have been teaching this wrong. The kingdom of God is not of words, but of power. It is of power. Praise God. When we learn to understand God's word for us, when we learn fully what it means to worship God in spirit and in truth, spirit, allow that spirit that is constantly speaking to you, come, know me, empty of yourself to be filled with me. But you cannot listen to every spirit out there because if you do not learn the truth, you will be lost. That is the problem with a lot of the denominations. They are so far into the spirit, yet they have twisted the word of God. And many spirits are speaking now. And they are listening to those spirits, yet they don't know the word of God. So I praise God that I knew the word of God before the spirit really infused me. But if you are so going only in the spirit, and you do not read your word if you do not take the messages and listen to what men of God are trying to teach you and women of God are trying to say to you by the Spirit of God. And you close your ears and you close your mind saying, you know, the Spirit is right, the Spirit is right. You will go off. Because there are many spirits, especially the evil ones, are yelling at you louder than the Holy Spirit all the time. And you will listen to them because you do not know what the Spirit of God is really saying because the Spirit will only speak His Word through the Bible. It is based on most of the time, mostly all the time, the Bible, unless it's a specific location or unless it's pointing to a person. Speak to that person. <laughs> My words. Because when the Lord spoke to Lisa and I just a couple of months ago about where to go next, what to do next. I was, I was lost. I was like, Lord, give me purpose here. I've been in this desert six, seven months already. Seven months. It was the seventh month. I was on the internet saying, okay, let's like look for this job here. Worship pastor. Oh, pastor, hey, mate, I could, I could preach too. I could do that. Janitor, I'd be a jan I've been in a janitor in a church. Let me take that. Lord, anything you have, I will take it. Okay, we, something's going on. I need to do something here. Well, it's the spirit up well enough saying, keep on seeking me. Keep on seeking me. That whole night, six hours, I could not sleep. I slept at 6 o'clock in the morning finally. And then as Lisa and I were going into God's word the next day, <laughs> it just came. I looked at her and just said, uh, what about the Philippines? And she just like jumped up. Oh, yes, let's go. And I've never seen her say do that before. So I kind of like stepped back. I said, okay, we need to really pray about this. We need to ask God if, if this is where we need to go. And we actually said, if it's your will, Lord, you provide. Three days later, praise God. Checking the mail to say that we not only got the tickets to go to the Philippines, we also got a computer with that. We also got a camcorder so that we can record the video of the preaching and also the worship. It is all for God and God's glory alone. And he is waiting and always talking to you. If you would listen to him, if you would read his word, if you would seek him every day, whether in the, especially in the morning and then all the way to the evening time, don't stop. Don't fill your mind with the things of the world. The, the, the TV is going to constantly be crying out to you, the radio People listen to different words and different music, and the Spirit of God is just saying, talk to me, listen to me. Now, if you are actually worshiping the, the God in the music you're listening to or the words of his words, meditating, this is life welling up inside 
springing out, bearing fruit everywhere. You don't even know where fruit is going to be born. Because the seed is not money. Seed is the word of God being spread throughout the whole world, bearing fruit. Psalm 1. And you shall be a tree planted by the rivers of water, which brings forth fruit in due season. It will always bear fruit, whether you see it right then and there or not. It will bear fruit. So continually pray, continually speak, speak life into your relatives that you know who don't know the Lord. Continually share God's word to those who are hurting and, and dying around you. Continually seek God and, Lord, show me where to go, what to say, what to do. Speak to me, I am listening. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my Father God. And you will see mighty things once you are empty of yourself, filled to overflowing with the living God. You will say things that he wants you to say. Like we were going downtown after preaching. And this was at the end of my preaching. And a man came up with a patch on his eye. Pastor Mark, Pastor Mark, you got to pray for me. you got to pray for me. I haven't been here in, in a couple of months. I've been in the hospital last month, really. And I'm sorry about that, but I, I, I got robbed, and they shot me in my eye. They shot me in my eye, two shots, point blank, nine millimeter. Homeless guy. Just to get a couple of pennies off him, I don't know. But you know what? The Spirit of God says, Touch his eye and pray for him. I said, okay. I've already seen some miracles, okay? But I was like, okay, Lord, what are you going to do in this situation? But it's not for me to judge. It's for God to work through. He will put people in your life to say, are you going to trust me? Are you going to believe that I'm going to do something marvelous? He actually showed me his eye that was when I describe it. All I could do was stand there, okay, brother. And I was getting the, the, the homeless guys who were in the discipleship at that time. And we gathered around him. I put my hand on his eye. And I prayed for him. The next day, the next day he comes up. Pastor Mark, Pastor Mark, I got to tell give a testimony. But first you got to see it. And you know, this is before the service. He opens up that patch, and I was thinking, oh, no, I don't want to see that again. <laughs> he opens up the patch, and he goes, move your hand in front of my eye. And his eye, though it was grayish, it did not look like the same it was the day before. And his eye was moving with my hand. He goes, I could see the shapes of it. To me, that was an incredible miracle already just from there. The next day, I see him again. I, I gave him my sunglasses, by the way. I, I, I buy these dollar sunglasses. And I gave him my sunglasses. And he was wearing them around. That's why I, it, it's, it's all what the Lord is saying. The next day, he came, comes up. He comes up just crying out. Crying out because he said, you know, Pastor Mark, the doctors could not get this one bullet. They got one of the bullets, but the other one was lodged too full, close to the skull, to the, to the brain, and they didn't want it to open up there. And it would all cost them a lot of money anyways, and they really didn't want to charge for it. So they left the other bullet inside his head. He said, look, Pastor Mark, look at this. And he opens up his hand, and I see a smashed 9-millimeter bullet. I was like, where'd you get that from? He said, it was on my pillow. This morning, it fell out of my head. No blood was there. And I could see a lot better. This is God working as you are obedient to what he is always saying. His word is always going forth. This is the life we need to live today. 
And we as believers have heard it so long. Well, God, God did those miracles back then. It's, it's not the same today. We're living in a new, we're living in grace. We're living in grace. Yes, and this grace is so mighty in its wanting to go through vessels that are empty of self and filled with the living God, the overflowing, to bless other people, to bless God more than anything else, glorify and magnify his holy name. And when God, when we stand before God and the opportunities that God says, I was trying to work through you from this, but you were too busy looking at your own self. Listen to my words. I am calling for you always. Second Chronicles 16.9, I, I, I need to end with this verse. I can go on forever. It says, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole world, looking for those hearts who are perfect. For him to use in a mighty way. He wants to look for people. He is always looking for people. He is looking for hearts who are that the fertile soil to say, Lord, like Isaiah said, here I am. Send me. Send me. Let's pray.